If you watched my previous video, you probably noticed that most of the people I interviewed wanted better cycling infrastructure. What disincentivizes you to ride your cargo bike instead of driving? Infrastructure. Usually just infrastructure. The infrastructure sucks. The thing I, that's the most frustrating is lack of infrastructure. But did you notice something that Sarah had to say about why she prefers going places by cargo bike? I can see what's going on. I can stop if something looks interesting. I can stop if I see something interesting. Sarah wants safe cycling infrastructure she can take to the places she wants to go, but she also wants to experience those spontaneous interactions that have been declining in cities due to car dependence. Cities can encourage or discourage these spontaneous interactions by where they locate cycle tracks. In this episode of Bike Bike Nudge Nudge, I'm going to equate the best cycle tracks in my city to urban freeways, but without all the racism. I will show that, due to their placement, these cycle tracks are designed mostly with the bike commuter in mind. Because of this, they are not as useful as they could be to a wider range of people on bikes. I will also show that these cycle tracks could have been better if they had been located just one block over. These are the best cycle tracks in my city, in addition to a downtown grid. One runs 2.1 kilometers from downtown to the west where it turns into a glorified sidewalk. The other runs 2.3 kilometers from the university to the east where it turns into a sharrow with a contraflow painted bike gutter. By North American standards, these are quite good. However, I don't think they maximize the potential of a good cycle track because where they are placed. I believe they are placed where they were to minimize the impact of vehicle traffic because, you know, car culture. These cycle tracks were designed to be ideal for bike commuters, which makes them more like an urban freeway than something that makes the city better for everyone. Why do I say these cycle tracks are ideal for commuters and therefore comparable to an urban freeway? Let's answer that by starting with a brief history of urban freeways. Starting after World War II, major cities in North America accelerated building suburbs and sprawling geographically. For the most part, it was white people who were moving to the new suburbs, a phenomenon known as white flight. This migration created a transportation problem. The predominantly white population that fled to the suburbs still had to reach their jobs in the downtown core. And they were promised they could do this by car, but traffic congestion and traffic controls on local roads made their drives slow. The obvious solution to these new white suburbanites was to raise historic, predominantly black neighborhoods in order to build urban freeways, which would soon become congested. So, mostly black communities were destroyed, and the people who remained had worse health outcomes, so the mostly white, middle and upper class people could have a slightly faster commute. I will put a link in the description to a recent video by City Nerd on the worst urban freeways in North America. The commuters on these freeways also received a different view of the inner city. The freeway segregated the commuter from the city. Part of the reason was to keep the pedestrian out of the way of the drivers, but another part of the reason was to keep the driver from seeing what the urban freeway did to the city. The result was that the drivers were just passing through and were not participants in the city. That is the part I want to compare to the cycle tracks in my city. The commuters on the urban freeway didn't care about the city. They just wanted to pass through their city unobstructed to reach their downtown jobs and then retreat back to their white, sanitized suburbs. There are people who bike who want a similar thing. Their predominant use of the bike is to commute downtown. The placement of these cycle tracks in my city allows them to do just that safely. By placing the cycle track on quiet residential street, you are giving preference to people who want to commute through the city, not people who want to engage with the city. Some people on bikes want to do more in their city than simply get from home to work as quickly as possible. Because a person on a bike moves slower, and is not encased in a moving metal sensory deprivation chamber, they have the opportunity to interact with their city much more than a person in a car. A cycle track on a side street limits your ability to interact with your city. When I ride on these cycle tracks, I feel calm, peaceful, and safe. But, for the most part, all I see is trees, houses, and apartments. These streets were already fairly quiet, so good traffic calming measures might have made the street just as safe as the cycle track. What I would prefer in my city is to feel safe on this street. Or this street. These two streets run parallel to those cycle tracks, but just one block over. I want to be on this street because there's stuff to do. The stores on these streets attract people. It might be winter right now, and city administration is doing its best to attract only cars, but despite up to seven lanes of space dedicated to personal metal boxes, and all the mud, noise, and pollution that that brings, these stores still attract people. I want to try the hand-pulled noodles from this shop, but I still haven't. The only time I see this store is the two or three times I've driven past, but I was unhappy I was in traffic, and parking is too cheap in the area, so parking is overused and hard to find. I've actually been near this store many, many times on my bike this past summer, but because the cycle track is on a non-commercial street, 
I don't see this store selling hand-pulled noodles. This store is also nearby and sells V-subs. I really like V-subs, but I didn't know that this store existed. Out of sight, out of mind. I visited two bakeries many times this summer because they are some of the few stores I can see from the cycle track. Despite being beside this strode, people sit on a sidewalk patio here and eat meals. If the cycle track ran along this street, the dining experience on the patios would likely be better and it would be much more likely for friends to see each other while one was on the patio and the other one was biking by. Please leave a comment if you've ever recognized a friend on a patio while driving by, forced your way out of traffic, hunted for scarce but underpriced parking, and walked a few blocks along a strode just to say hello and hope for an invite to join your friend on the patio. It's not something I've ever done. Well, that's what I wanted to say about the placement of cycle tracks. You should be advocating for your city to add more properly designed cycle tracks to your city, but remember that location is very important. While a cycle track here is great for commuters, a cycle track here is even better for everyone, especially people who want to experience their city. But it takes a lot more advocacy to get cycle tracks here because car culture tells us nothing can be done in a city without a car. Despite lots of evidence, drivers and many city administrators don't believe that more cycle tracks here are better for business and that road diets work. So if you're at least getting cycle tracks here, you still need to keep up the advocacy. My city has regressed to building wide sidewalks. Wide sidewalks are bad cycling infrastructure, and the ones being built in my city don't have continuous sidewalks or raised crosswalks. But that's probably a story for another time. If you like your urban planning YouTube with a side of critical race theory, please consider liking this video. And subscribe if you'd like to hear more about how cycling infrastructure can nudge you to spend more time on patios with friends. Thanks for watching.